My name is Winston Sinclair. I'm the co-owner of WSA International. I'm a casting director and a producer. As a casting director, um, we're like the middlemen, and what we do is we vet through the best possibilities, well, all the possibilities for a character, for whatever actor or actor should be played, and then we present them to the producer and the director, and then they make the final choice. When I graduated from college, I wrote a letter to Spike Lee. Um, actually, my girlfriend of mine um, kept trying to get me to write a letter to Spike, and I wouldn't do it. And she finally gave me the address um, for his office one day in Brooklyn. And this was the Monday before Do the Right Thing. And she said, look, here, take the address. I don't care what you do with it, but I know that I have to give it to you. And I wrote him a letter that Monday night. And um, I put the letter in my Bible. And I said, Lord, clearly you don't want me to find a job because I've been looking for a job for two months and I couldn't find one. I said, show me what you want me to do. And I mailed that letter on Tuesday. His office called me on Thursday, and I've never done anything else. I started out as an intern. That's why um, even at WSA, and ever since I've been in the film industry for the past 27 years, this September, I've always had interns because that was my entree to the industry and giving um, people of color an opportunity to learn something, see something, try something that they normally would not get an opportunity to do. We have Barbershop 3, which is coming out in March um, with Ice Cube. We just finished casting All Eyes on Me, which is the story of Tupac Shakur. And that was um, extremely emotional for me because Tupac, Tupac was a friend. So um, I worked with him on his first film, Juice. And then to come full circle and be a part of this project was absolutely amazing for me. And then Lee Daniels is um, launching a new television show and we did the principal casting on that as well. Some of the other great um, directors that I've worked with, John Singleton, Steven Spielberg, Malcolm Lee. I love working with Malcolm. I've known Malcolm since he was in Georgetown. Ernest Dickerson. Um, it was great working with him as well and absolutely Lee Daniels. I worked with him on the award-winning purchase. One. I have several favorites for different reasons. Um, Malcolm X would have to be at the top because that matured me as an artist in, in my career and showed me that I really could do anything. I've worked with some of the greats and two of the things that I think that I've taken away was one from Spike Lee, which is always operate with excellence. He made sure that you brought your A game. Every department brought their A game at all times. So that raised the bar for us. And then uh, I think another great that I worked with was Debbie Allen, who empowered me as a businesswoman to handle my business and Steven Spielberg, which showed me that even in his greatness, you can be gracious. I came to Georgia because God said it was time to move, and I came down here to work on a project, and one of the things that I noticed was all the talent that was here. I actually, prior to coming, gone to a class where um, the instructor asked me to come and sort of monitor the class and see what the talent, and when I saw all these absolutely wonderful actors, I'm like, where are you from? I've been in New York for 23 years. Why don't I know you? They're like, we're all from Atlanta. We drove here to take the class. So when I saw that sort of commitment and that level of expertise, I was like, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> Again, I have to, I, the word excellence keeps resonating. Be prepared. Make sure that you are always fine tuning your instrument, which is your craft. And when you walk into an audition room, own the space. It's your space. Own it. Walk in there with the confidence. Do your best and then walk out. I would have to say one of my toughest moments was during Malcolm X. Um, I haven't told this story much. Um, I uh, was working on the project and I had, uh, we were head of the extras casting department and we had an extra that we had a problem with and we were, have, I was told to tell him to leave. And he decided at that point to attack me. And um, at that point, uh, it's all kind of a blur still, but I remember thinking, I don't need this, I can go do something else for a living. And I called the producer, and I'll always remember um, Preston Holmes was one of my mentors, and I told him that, I basically told him I was quitting. I was like, I don't need this, this is not what I signed up for. And um, he asked me to go home and sleep on it. And call him again tomorrow, and he said, and if you still want to go, I'll accept your resignation. And I went to bed and I woke up and I got up. I remember getting up the next morning and went to go brush my teeth. And then I call, I looked in the mirror and I called Preston and I told him I would stay because I didn't want to look in the mirror and see a quitter for the rest of my life. We're actually producing um, the Maynard Project, co-producing the Maynard Project with the family of Maynard Jackson. And we're gonna be doing more producing. And um, I wanna get back to theater. I wanna direct theater. So that's on my bucket list of things to do. I don't think I've had the I made it moment, but a moment that 
sort of had my heart skip a beat was um, the day that I met Michael Jackson and kicked his hand. When I was working on a project with him at the Apollo, that was because I've been a Michael Jackson fan since I knew myself. So that was amazing. But I don't that that I made it moment. I haven't gotten there yet. I got lots more to do.